if you understand first of all that you don't want absolute power you don't want absolute control you want yes some control do you see we always love controlling something that's not really under our control remember i gave you the illustration right in the beginning of holding a gyroscopic top feeling sometimes you're with it but sometimes it's alive under your hand and this sensation too you often get say in driving a car or something like that it's more or less under your control but on the other hand it isn't and that's the the beautiful thing because when something is partly under your control but isn't then you have the same sort of relationship with it that you have when you have someone you love some other person they are partly under their your control because they've agreed to live with you and go along with you and so on but also they're not and the measure to which they're not is the measure to which they seem really alive to you so then we ask the question uh if the motivation of power gaining disappears you've seen through it and you know that's not what you want what other motivation takes its place as the origin of actions and it seems to me that the answer here is compassion it's simply because when you want to relate to another living being what you really are asking of them is that they be in the same situation that you are you want to meet and encounter someone else who has your problems your fears and your delights you don't want a doll you want another you another self because that would be at least as surprising to you as you are And so then at once that, that when you see that that is the case and that the most interesting thing in the world is the the relationship with these others and you can see at once yourself in the situation of all the other people and then you think no I don't want to control these people I would like them yes to be controlled in the sense that they were happy to do the things i would like them to do but obviously i can't force that because if i forced it they wouldn't be happy see when you marry someone when you have a family you want your children you want your relatives you want your wife etc to be happy to do the things for you that they do so we say to each other um would you like to bring the washing in and very often the answer is no but i will <laughs> because you see we put it that way because we always hope that the things that we do for each other will be pleasurable to both sides so a school teacher will get up in class and says What nice boy will clean the blackboard for me? All these ways we use of trying to get voluntary cooperation. Willingly given help. That's what we look for. But there is a despite the lot of foolishness that goes on this is a sound thing, you see? That there really is no greater satisfaction that you can imagine. done that kind of personal relationship 
We're in. You can trust a being who is other than you and not under your control to do for you what you want because they like it. As you, on your side, would want to do something for them in that way and so as to give pleasure to the other person. Let's take in, uh, in, in sexuality where you get a kind of a critical example of this. The biggest fun in sexual relationships is giving orgasm to women. And if that doesn't happen, uh, many men feel disappointed. Because the thing that they really wanted to do was to give pleasure and get their own pleasure out of giving it. Now that's compassion in the real sense of the word, feeling with and through someone else. Where the whole trick is that you lose control for a while of the situation and say, I throw the ball to you, now it's yours. So that uh, the more you give the power away, what you're really doing is you're othering yourself. Now, the more you other yourself by giving power away, the more of a self you are. Because self and other are reciprocal. So you find that people who through a sadhana, a yoga discipline, have overcome their ego, have transcended the ego, are tremendously strong personalities. You would think, theoretically, they would all be non-entities. And to lack entirely what psychologists call ego strength. But actually, they're nothing of the kind. They are, every one of them, unique. They're all quite different from each other. And they are very, very, uh, what I would call, strong characters. Because the more they have given it up, the more they get it. So, in, in this way of thinking, let's put it in another dimension for the moment. Let's suppose we, we are thinking of a relationship that is not just to people. People are very obviously other and independent of one's ego. But give it to everything. Say to everything which in course is going to include as much of, your, of yourself as you can objectivize. In other words, your stomach, your intestines, your everything, you see. Say to it all, now it's your turn. Let's see what you're going to do. Let it happen. You know, you, you do this complete let off of control. And you find that you, you let's, I, I have to put it in a provisional way first. You get the sensation that, the, that, that everything else is living you. It lives you. That you've given away control, you see, to everything else. It's a lovely, irresponsible state to be in.